So we talk about the elements of the video, of the image, the shooting list. We know everything about uh, shot sizes and camera angles and movements. It's time to talk about sound because uh, no matter what uh, kind of video you make, it's an audiovisual product. Yes, it has to have at least some music on it. Uh, but the soundtrack isn't just music. Let's talk about the elements that compose the soundtrack. First, we have the voice. Voice is a gen generic term. Yes, we, we can have voice over. This means someone, a uh, masculine or feminine voice, describes the action. You can find it in commercial, in radio spots, and um, in movies, in all sorts of, uh, of uh, videos. Uh, it can be someone of uh, like a narrator, or it can be one of the characters that has this voice over and tells the story. Um, the second type of voice is the dialogue, the most common used form in, in um, all sorts of audiovisual products. It's the dialogue between two, three or more characters. We can also have monologue. We can hear what the character is saying, if you know it from theater, it's also in movies, it's also in um, commercials, the monologue, where the character talks to himself, to herself. And the interview. We know the interview mostly from documentaries, from um, shows, yes, uh, TV shows. Uh, we can also find it in our product. Uh, besides voice, we have effects sound effects in our video. Sound effects are really, really important because they add a life, they add uh, uh, realism to our um, video. And they also add this sense of spectacular. If we have uh, special effects in the video, we also need to hear something. Uh, these effects can be recorded during the sh shooting, yes, on location. And it's good to do that if you have uh, special props or a specific location where you can't go there the second time or it costs you money, time, um, transportation. Use this location not only to shoot uh, cool uh, shots, but also to record sound. Uh, ambiences, we'll talk about ambiences right away. Um, you can also record effects separately in various location like, I don't know, um, car sounds or certain props, certain elements, gunshots, if you have a video with, uh, with special effects and explosions. Um, you can also record effects in the sound stage, in the sound studio, uh, in real time with the action. This means Foley or separately, like simple sound effects. You can also select sound effects from sound libraries. Yes, you type in something that you need, something you're looking up for, and you can find it in sound libraries online for free or you need to buy them. Uh, they can easily be found even on YouTube, with a, although I don't recommend uh, uh, getting sounds from YouTube, but use a dedicated sound library. Or you can digitally create effects. This means you need um, certain equipment, a MIDI, a pad or something, and you create sounds that actually don't exist in our real life, but you create them digitally in the software using plugins. Voice effects, ambiences. What is an ambience compared to effects? Imagine this, yes? A sound effect can be the sound of a mobile phone, the sound of a footstep, the sound of a computer keyboard. But if we talk about ambience, office ambience, for instance, you hear all these sounds. You hear uh, voices whispering, you hear a lot of um, phones ringing, a lot of computer noise, um, footsteps, maybe an announcement. So all these separate distinct effects, sound elements, form the ambience. We have ambience of forest, of subway, of a supermarket, uh, of my living room here, yes, it's an ambience because if I'm quiet, I can hear noises from outside, from the neighbors. So every single location has a specific ambience. And 
um, one location sounds differently in, uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, during springtime, during winter. So um, ambiences are really, really important for, uh, for your film um, because they convey a sense of realism, a sense of immersive experience. It's like you are really there if it's surround and you hear it from all the speakers and you place the viewer in the middle of this location. So it, it should sound really, really good, Technic both technically and aesthetically. The last element of the soundtrack is the music. The music can be original, composed by a composer, or copyright material for which you'll need, obviously, uh, the right to use the music. Um, it's important to talk also about the phases of sound post-production here. Um, first, you'll need to edit the dialogue. Yes, so the dialogue is the most important element that you record on set. It should be clean, intelligible, without noises from the crew, without um, noises from other props, from planes or refrigerators, air conditioning, and thing, things like that. But most of the time you cannot do that because there are a lot of noises that, um, I don't know, muddy up your sound. So you need to clean the dialogue, yes? Um, also, there is the dialogue recording. Not uh, all the time um, the sound on location can be saved. So sometimes it's cannot, it cannot be used. Sometimes you want to change the interpretation of the actors. So you need to re-record the lines. You need to re-record voiceover. You need to re-record dialogue uh, fragments or whole dialogue scenes. Yes, this is why you need a studio. And you do the automated dialogue replacement, the ADR. Yes, the automated dialogue replacement in sync with the pictures. You call the actors in the studio and you record this, um, this dialogue. Um, also a phase of sound post-production is the sound effects editing. Yes, like I said before, you need effects in our video. Imagine you have the transitions and uh, computer graphics and animation. Everything needs to have a sound, right? Because um, it's... Uh, it's boring and it's not spectacular without it. So you need to edit the sound effects, yes? To put them in sync, to um, combine sound effects, to add multiple sound effects, uh, to obtain a single sound effect, a new one, original one. And yes, this is why we talk about sound design. Um, the next phase is the Foley. I said before, sound effects can be recorded in sync in the sound studio. So it's the Foley uh, process. This means it um, all the noises, footsteps, prop movements, cloth movements are performed in real time while looking at the video. And um, they are performed by a Foley artist uh, using various props, combining sounds, using various shoes to, to record the footsteps. Um, Imagine yourself movies when you saw fighting scenes or uh, science fiction movies, animation, uh, gun handling, horse hooves, keyboard sounds, everything is done in Foley. Uh, okay, you may be thinking, why don't I use the sound selected from the sound, sound library and just sync it? Most of the time you can do that if you don't find a certain prop or you don't have access to a Foley stage, but it's time consuming. It's really time consuming to edit and sing each and every single footstep and, uh, I don't know, body falls and uh, wing clapping. It's, it's really time consuming and it's better to do them in sync in real time. Another example of Foley sounds are uh, bone cracking, punches, swords, um, robots, all sorts of things. And most of the time you don't even use the prop that you see in the image. You use different objects that sound interesting. The next step in the sound post-production is the music composition. 
this should be done pretty early enough so that um, the director and the editor and maybe the sound department get a clue of what, what the mood transmitted by the music will be like. Um, then we'll talk about sound design. This is the artistic part of the sound. It's a creation of certain sound effects that you don't get automatically, automatically from the sound library. So you create them specifically for this movie and think about um, famous movies uh, with um, sorts of creatures or uh, monsters, robots. They sound original, they sound different. In your commercial, in your corporate video, you should also include uh, various uh, examples of sound effects that are originally created so that no one has the feeling that, oh, I heard this sound effect before. I heard this whoosh before, oh, in tons of other commercials. Try to be creative, yes. Then the next step is the pre-mix, yes. You have all the sound elements, the voice, the ambience, the effects, the music, and you have to do a premix. This is a preparation for the final mix. Yes, you have a lot of tracks. Uh, it's, um, I don't know, it's complicated to work with a lot of tracks in sound. So you need to simplify your timeline and your project. And if you have, let's say seven tracks of dialogue, combine them into two. Or if you have 10 tracks of ambiences, combine them into two or three, and uh, then do the final mix. This is the last phase in your sound work where all the sound elements used in your video are balanced to a unitary soundtrack. This means we adjust the levels. Yes, we uh, pan from left to right, from right to left certain elements. We add reverberation to dry sounds so that they sound realistic coming from that location. And we export the material according to specific standards. Um, there are certain requirements for mono, stereo, uh, surround 5.1. I'm not gonna go with you too much in this technical information, but if you wanna work as a professional in the market and not, I'm not talking only about films, because um, I know you're not interested in films, but in advertising, in advertising, you need to pay attention to certain standards the sound has to be at a certain level, the dynamic range, this is the, the softest and the loudest part of your soundtrack should meet certain requirements. So it's really important to, to know about these things because unless your commercial won't be accepted. 